Oneness guys, Advaita. What is Advaita? My understanding, cognition. I welcome you all with my love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Shri Nityananda Paramashiva. So I got this amazing uh, comment in one of the previous videos when I was talking about anti-Hindu forces and saying, oh, what is there? Hindu, anti-Hindu, both of them is oneness. There's nothing. And it's um, so basically that was the fundamental um, thought current of the comment. So I felt like, oh, yes, that's true. I have to share about that. So that's the understanding I have so far about Advaita, oneness. Um, Swamiji has shared, he shared a lot about Advaita. So there's a lot of content available in his satsangs, his discourses on his channel on YouTube. Link is also in the description below. And um, one of the major problem that Hinduism is facing, I'm using the word Hinduism knowing that it was given by the British and ultimately it is Bharat and ultimately it's Sanatana Hindu Dharma. But just to make it relevant to people today, for now, we'll use Hinduism. Once we become a little bit more alive and authentic, then we can start using the other terms. That's what I feel. I don't feel that now um, calling Sanatana Hindu Dharma or Bharat makes sense because Hinduism is not lived um, in the way that it is supposed to. And the Hindus are not standing for it. And they're, they're, be they're being abused left and right and they keep quiet and it's like, oh my God. Anyways, that's why I'm using Hinduism, because it's a diluted version of Sanatana Hindu Dharma um, and somehow it is kept alive and uh, yes, it is being persecuted. People will realize at some point, but um, it is being persecuted intensely. Gurus are being attacked constantly left and right, especially if they stand for the tradition and, um, and it's, it's been going on for at least 40 years. And even there's a book, there's a book written by the English man uh, that, that is basically saying it is giving step by steps the way to destroy Hinduism. And it starts by saying that these people are very powerful and this is the methodology to break them to pieces. So you see, it's like people don't have the right knowledge and they are not interested also, they don't search. And they don't try to put the dots together now because Swamiji is standing loud for Hinduism. Like when I say loud, he's very loud. And now he's attracting all this life negative forces towards him because um, he's kind of forcing them to expose themselves. They used to work nicely and subtly underground, but now they have to come to the surface because Swamiji is too loud. And um, anyways, so that is the persecution that is going on. And what I want to talk about is about this Advaita thing and how Hindus are non-involved. And Hindus, were, were, they will have this thought current, oh, Sanatana Hindu Dharma is, Sanatana means eternal, uh, so there's nothing to worry about, it will never get destroyed. Um, sure, I mean, the knowledge, the science of Sanatana Hindu Dharma might not get destroyed, but, uh, but the lifestyle can disappear. And if the lifestyle disappears, then everything else is useless. Nobody is going to... Nobody's going to connect to it. It will just lie there unattended. So it's not just about the fact that it's being eternal. Actually, what I feel is that many Hindus use this idea of Sanatana means eternal um, in a way just to justify not to engage with life and with, his, what is, with what is actually happening. And as far as I understand, after you know, internalizing a lot with what Swamiji was sharing, is it's a it's a fundamental misunderstanding of what is Advaita, and actually not it's a it is not Advaita. Um, Advaita is a space of oneness. Advaita is a space. It is not an action. Actions come afterwards. In the in the in this in if we if we were to put them on a scale, um, actions are much more superficial than cognitions. Advaita is a cognition. Like I was sharing in one of the previous videos, if I realize I am super consciousness and that the source of you is super consciousness, and I relate to you, then there won't be any fear within me, and I will be able to enjoy you. When so when Paramashiva says that he he made himself into many to enjoy himself that enjoyment, that bliss will become available if you are in the space of Advaita. But saying that everything is one, therefore you don't need to do anything, 
as far as I understand, that is not Advaita, that is Avidya. Avidya means incomplete knowledge. It is a knowledge of oneness, a concept. It's not even understood as a principle for these minds. It's a concept that the mind grabs and holds on to, hold, hold on to, whatever, wherever the S is, and justifies his laziness, tiredness, boredom, and his fundamental hatred of life and not wanting to engage and get involved with life. So that is not at all Advaita. That's using like a powerful word to justify incompletions. Um, so it's not about not engaging with life. It is about engaging with life from the space of Advaita, from the context of oneness, from the context that you are Paramashiva and that everything is Paramashiva and everything is a blissful coexistence. Um, so we have to stand and do some things for the Dharma. But as we stand, we should stand from a space of Advaita, meaning a space of non-violence. So when we respond to attackers, we don't respond with the violence that they engage with, uh, engage with us. Um, they engage with us from a space of violence and we do not reflect that violence because we are in a space of Advaita, we are in a space of oneness. And we respond to them and neutralize the whole venom. How I feel this is how Shiva is Nilakantha, right? He swallows the poison and heals. So in the same way, when you're in the oneness, you're so powerful that you can swallow this violence because you know where it comes from, you know how it happens, and therefore it has no power over you. Um, so yeah, oneness is the cognition. It's not an action. It's not, oh, there's not, nothing needs to be done. I continue to do my own thing and everything else will be fine. No, that is not oneness. That is incomplete knowledge. That is avidya. And it's very dangerous. And that is why Hindus are suffering now because there's too much of avidya. Uh, there's too much of avidya, too much lack of, of involvement. I mean, the Hinduism is not even taught in schools. And you learn about other religions. Like what is in India? Like, how is that possible? It's ridiculous. And it's justified somehow. So it's like crazy. Even, even sometimes back, I was watching some, 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 some TV shows which were abusing Hindus and all that. And they, they abuse Hindus so much. And it's so blatant. It's like so much of in your face that if, if you just watch this for some time, you just become insensitive to the whole thing. And they would, they will, they will step on your face and you'll be just like, ah, yeah, okay, whatever. It's like, it's like crazy. It's crazy. It actually doesn't make sense. Um, so Hindus have to stand. They have to wake up. And we all have to do our part, enrich, educate, and, uh, and share the space of nonviolence and stand for Kailasa, what Swamiji is reviving, the Hindu nation. Yesterday, Swamiji revealed a new name, uh, according to the Agamas, Sri Kailasha. So the spelling has uh, changed a little bit and Sri was added before. But this is basically, yeah, the nation which will allow Hindus to live Hinduism freely without being abused left and right by anti-Hindu elements. So yes, with this, I'll end this video, inviting you to leave a comment if you have anything to share or anything to say. And uh, like, subscribe, and check the description below for some nice content. Nityanandam. Thank <laughs> you.